Shout out James Ham. What's up, Hammer? Hi, friends. Cabo Ham, we missed you. Back yeah, back man. in standard definition here yeah, in America. Go, go back to Cabo oh, for these for these. Go hits. back to your Cabo mansion so we could see you better. <laughs> oh, I'm on the wrong Wi-Fi. Well, uh, well, see, that's a, that's all right. Look, John Bull, John Bull's got the freeze time about <laughs> 70 seconds from now at 303. Uh, as we welcome back in our insider, our King's insider from the insiders. Uh, James Ham here with us. Hammer, what's happening, man? Oh, not a whole lot. Uh, you know, we're in the dog days of summer at this point. So uh, we did see, I don't know if you guys, while you were on the air, uh, Sasha Vizenkov decided to go back to Europe officially. Yeah. Um, and literally so, paid $6 million to do it, which is wild. Yeah, you're or gave up $6 million to do it. That's pretty crazy. I'm going to need my money. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Uh, that was crazy. I, I'm surprised he didn't have to pay any of his money back. Um, you know, I, I, I'm that he he was able to that he didn't get any money for for leaving at all. That that to me was very surprising. But that's a, I mean, it is what it is. I, I hope he's happy over there. Uh, certainly, that's where you know, like he's he's a star there, and it makes more sense for him to be there than for him to be here. And, in the NBA as a, as a role player, whether it's in Sacramento or Toronto or somewhere else. And it, it's, it's also interesting too. I, I thought Sasha was a fine NBA player, you know, before he even really got a chance to get a grasp of the league and everything else like that. He was fine. Like he's, he's a guy like, I don't believe Sasha got played out of the league. Like he came here and he's like, oh, it's, this is just too much. Like, he can't compete here. I, I don't think that was the case. He got hurt. Um, I don't know if he always got the best uh, playing time opportunity from 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 Mike Brown, and then it just kind of snowballed, man. So um, it's it's interest it's interesting that he's just gone after yeah. a year because yeah, I didn't look at him and think like, oh, he's not cut out to be in the league. Yeah, I thought he was an NBA player as well. Um, like whether he deserved 15 minutes or 12 minutes or, or 22 minutes, I don't know what, um, you'd have to, it, it would, you know, definitely help him to be in a different situation where he had longer, more athletic players around him, um, as opposed to just like as a catch and shoot player. But, um, yeah, I wish him the best. I, I hope it works out in Olympiacos, uh, in Greece for him. Um, again, sometimes it's just, you just pull the plug on something that you know, isn't going to work for you. And to me, it, it does make sense for him to go back and just just be a star where you're comfortable and and have a good time, you know, live the good life there as opposed to struggling here and and all the travel and everything else. It's something I, I think that people miss that um, like European, like let's say let's say you play in the EPL, right, the English Premier League, like you you might travel like an hour on a bus ride, two hours on a bus ride even if you went to go play in a different country, you know, it takes 45 minutes to get from England to, to France or to Spain. Uh, even going all the way to Rome, it might be like an hour and 20 minute flight from, from England. When you get here and all of a sudden you're doing an 82 game trip around the world, basically in, in the United States, it's so much more traveled, so much more wear and tear on you. And so even that, like, I know he was lonely here. And, and so it makes sense for me for him to go and uh, go back where he's comfortable. Do you uh, remember what he was making over there? Yeah, like it, it I was, think he had two million. Yeah, he just got a raise. Yeah, I would have gutted it out for a year. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, it's Toronto. I'm 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 good for a year. Yeah, I'm gonna then, just I'm gonna just have to, you know, I just gotta do what I gotta do for this bag. Yeah, that's that's six million and some change, man. That's that's tough. That's yeah, tough. I remember Mike Mike Bibby left. Was it the Knicks? Mike or maybe he no, went to Mike Bibby had a or maybe it was Atlanta. He had nice. a buyout in which he didn't take anything. He just wanted to leave mm -hmm. and left like $8 million. See, both of those situations are more egregious than Jalen Brunson. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, like, no. Yeah. Uh, give me the six mil. Yeah, because there's no hope those guys are getting that money back. Yeah. Oh, in the Euro League, <laughs> Sasha could probably play for like 10 more years. True. He could be the LeBron of <laughs> – right. 
his league and play till he's 40. Well, he certainly could string together, a, you know, a couple of years of MVP caliber play. And, and again, he'll be a star, you know, like when we watched him play, like building up to when he came over, you know, like they go to the, the European championships, he's playing in like Spain or something. And again, consider the travel differences. That's huge. Uh, but also like it's, you're living a good life there. You're, everything is much like more compact and, and it's something that, you know, I think people who travel a lot, they realize that the U S is gigantic. It's just huge. And so to go from one coast to the next, just remember the the Kings had that one trip or it was like, they went to Atlanta. Well, I think they went to like Orlando and then Atlanta and then like Charlotte and then stopped in the middle of the country on the way home and then came back and, and over like a, six day stretch they traveled like i don't know like seven thousand miles like it, it is just the rigors of it are much more difficult and and uh so hey I, I don't begrudge the guy for wanting to go home where again he's he instantly walks in the door and everybody is going to be so excited over the moon that he's back and as opposed to here it would have been like oh okay sasha is still on the roster and you know so i i I think being embraced and all that stuff is probably a big deal for him and good for him. Uh, speaking of guys who didn't have the best year last year, what's your thoughts on Kevin Herter right now? We were talking about him earlier with Will Z as he wrote something up on, on SI.com about, uh, about Kevin and just with it seeming like free agency moves, things like that are kind of settling down right now and a, and a true off season may begin a little bit where things just kind of go quiet. What is your, what is your opinion on Kevin Herter heading into his third season, at least for now with Sacramento? Yeah, I'm intrigued to see how they handle him. Um, where does he play? What position do they think he is? Um, is he, is he your starting shooting guard? I mean, there's always that potential for mm -hmm. him to walk right back into a starting shooting guard role with, uh, Malik Monk coming off the bench and, and even, you know, Keon Ellis coming in and playing some backup one. Um, like we don't know what he, what his role is going to be, but I'll tell you that like when I had conversations at the end of the season, there was a, like a quiet, like, Hey, he had a bad season and, and it wasn't even that bad. It was just bad compared to what he did the year before. And mm -hmm. so we think he can get back on the right path and we think he can find himself. And, and we also think that he's like a big part of what we do. I was getting a lot of that from inside the walls. And, uh, so, so maybe they do just like, feel like, you know, if you had to lose one of them, uh, between him and Harrison Barnes, um, you would choose to lose the guy who's in his thirties and not the guy who's, you know, 25, 26 years old. And, uh, so that makes sense from like an age, uh, standpoint, but also, you know, I, I think there is value to a guy who can play the two and the three, uh, who's, you know, six foot seven and doesn't have a huge, like height disparity when he moves over to the three. And, you know, if you're going to bring in a guy like DeMar DeRozan and, um, you, you do need more shooting, you know, uh, DeRozan isn't a natural three point shooter, so you would you know, want to pair him with as many elite shooters as you can. And so it could make a lot of sense here, but I also think, you know, the Kings are leaving a door open for a trade down the road too, because, you know, he's got two years left on his deal. It's 17 and 18 million ish over the next two years. Um, and you, you basically, if it doesn't work out, if he doesn't come back and have just a knockdown, you know, three point shooting season to start the year. Maybe he is a player that you look to move off of midway through the year. And, and you always have that contract sort of as a placeholder. And and that's what I'm starting to think as well with this team. Like, I, I kind of feel like, um, uh, like what you reported, I, I believe was hundred percent accurate, you know, a couple of weeks ago that they were still looking to make moves. And I kind of feel like mm -hmm. they, they looked, um, they saw what was out there. And there wasn't anything maybe that they felt like they needed to pull the trigger on right now. And I think maybe the game plan might be, let's just start the season like this. And we have, you know, Kevin Herter or maybe future picks to use if we feel like we need to make a move in season. But as the roster is, 
let's see how the let's see how we what we can do with this roster and then move accordingly. There's no rush to do anything right now. Yeah, I, I mean, I get that 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 there is no like major major rush to to go do something as of right now. Um, but then again, I mean, you do still have the same problems that you had last year, and you know, you you can't avoid the fact that the Kings still don't have the the length and athleticism that they need at the three and the four. Um, and, and you can say, well, you know, you, you got some of that covered with DeRozan, but again, six foot six, and you can say, well, you know, Jalen McDaniels, like he could have a bounce back season and be better than he was last year where he couldn't get off the bench in Toronto. Um, but there's nothing that's guaranteed that he's going to step in and be a rotational piece for you. And so you need more of that, uh, of those types of players. And, and you need higher end versions of that type of player than, than McDaniels for sure. So, um, I'm intrigued to see how it all plays out in the end. Um, but you know, again, I, I don't think having, having good players on your team isn't a bad thing, you know, and, and I still think like Kevin Herter is a good player and, you know, you added another piece into Marta Rosen, like a really good player, but you're always going to be like wondering, like, how are you going to match up against New Orleans again? How are you going to match up against Minnesota? Like these teams with these super long athletic uh, threes and fours and even fives that can go out and stretch the floor. And the answer is, as of right now, you don't match up perfectly with them. And and you might need to have some of those pieces, whether it's like a smaller move right now to add in somebody else or it's a bigger move down the road. Do you think that they're maybe looking at it like we're going to we're going to top teams with like our style? Like we're not going to try to match length for length with everybody or strength for strength with everybody. Like we're going to have a style that is unique to us, kind of similar to the to the to the first year of this beam team, but hopefully on a grander scale now that just like, no, we're not going to be forced to play your way. You're going to be forced to play ours. Yeah, it's good in theory, and that works against a lot of teams. It does, but in a seven game series, that doesn't always work, yeah. and, and that's the problem. I mean, you got to figure out how to how to manage it all. Of, like you know, it's it's still a glaring weakness. The Kings don't have. I mean, you can say Alex Lynn is your rim protector, but I mean, as of today, Alex Lynn has to play minutes for this team. You know, last year, Alex Lynn didn't have to play minutes. Like, it, you know, Alex has had a long history of injury, um, but he's been pretty solid since he he joined the Kings. Um, but they had, you know, they had other options there. They had JaVale McGee. And at this point, you don't have that other piece that might be able to help you. And even if you look at the power forward position, like Keegan Murray truly isn't like a, a standard, you know, run-of-the-mill power forward. He's a 3-4 or maybe a 4-3. I'm not sure which. So the really only true power forward you have on this roster is is Trey Lyles. And so again, uh, Trey isn't a long super athlete, and, and you keep running into this issue that you don't have your your rim protection. Um, and and even if you do, you might not have that rim protection that's going to play in a standard rotation where he's playing more than like you know ten or twelve minutes a game. But it, it, I would say this, though, to him, isn't the league kind of moving away from that traditional power forward that we think of? A lot of these teams that are playing, that that four is out on the perimeter now. You know what I mean? That's the stretch four. That's the, You go down the, the list, the teams that were successful this past year, you know, Boston has, I don't know, sometimes Tatum would probably be at the four if, if Holiday and, and, and Derek White are on the floor at the same time. Dallas, who knows what they were doing at the four, you know, uh, uh, PJ Washington, you know, maybe would be there for um, OKC. They've added Hartenstein, but that's also probably going to move Holmgren, who's mm -hmm. a little bit of a I'm not understand what I'm saying, like a softer big man. Like he's not this big bruising four. he's more of a finesse type of four. So that's kind of where they're going. You know what I mean? And you've got a, a Keegan Murray. It kind of fits in. Even the guy that everybody really wants, Laurie Markkinen, is more of a finesse perimeter type power forward. So then, then it seem like they're well equipped for kind of the way basketball is being played right now in the NBA. 
Well, I, I would say yes if if you just look at that the fact that some of those guys are finesse guys versus uh, traditional power forwards. But I would also point out that you know there's a big difference between Chet Holmgren at seven foot tall and and you know Evan Mobley at almost seven foot tall and just keep going down the list of players that are long and super athletic that are playing that traditional four at this point. So while they aren't, they might not be, you know, like guys who are bruisers, um, they're still legitimate, you know, seven footers or close to it with seven foot two, seven foot three wingspans. And you don't have one of those guys. Um, and your center is not one of those guys either. Uh, you know, like Demonis is, I wouldn't call him an undersized center so much as I would, he's just not like a long, super athletic shot blocking center. And I, I think Domas is a much better defender than people give him credit for. I mean, like the advanced stats say he's a much better defender. Um, but that still doesn't mean that you don't need that other guy who can block shots or uh, they can either block shots or space the floor at like a really, really high level. Casey brought him up. You think Markinen gets traded? Um, No. No, I think Danny, Danny Ainge does this mess all the time. I think we're going to get, what is it, August 6th? We'll find out if... Um, that's the one day where he can sign a contract extension and still get traded by the trade deadline. Um, so as soon as he's eligible for an extension, uh, if they sign him that day, it's six months from that, that he can be traded. Uh, if he doesn't sign on that day, then um, like things are going to get dicey for Utah. And that's because it's post trade deadline, right? Like if he doesn't sign August 6th, then yeah. the trade deadline has passed. On the set, and he can't he can't be moved. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So his value plummets. His value goes to an expiring contract that you're you're renting, um, who you would at least have Larry Bird rights to if you traded for. But again, it's it's a tough tough thing. You're gonna have to wait until the end of the season to try to retain him if you're a team that goes out and trades for him. I, I'm gonna guess that Marketing doesn't get traded. That's just my my own personal thing. I, I, you know, Danny Ainge loves him, and for a good reason. Like he's a very good player. Um, and, but again, when we're talking about like traditional power forwards versus non traditional power forwards, Laurie Markkinen's like seven foot tall at least, and, and super athletic, and can play off the bounce and do all kinds of things. Again, like I, I if I'm the Kings, you're okay with Keegan Murray matching up against him, but but then you're going to run out of players that can match up against athletic small forwards and, and everything else. That's just a tough defense, uh, defensive assignment for anybody. Um, let alone somebody who's, who's giving up like four inches in height at a minimum and, and maybe a, a couple inches in wingspan as well. The, um, the, the whole thing with, uh, Lori marketing in, in Utah, in my opinion was more of, Danny Ainge saying, I don't really have any plans of trading him. Like, I'll re-sign him and we'll figure it out later. But if somebody gives me, he's not untradeable. Like, if somebody gives me something that I just can't refuse, then, yeah, we can make that happen. But mind you, I'm only doing that for offers that I can't refuse. It's not just a good offer. It's got to be one that, 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 that blows me away. And if I don't get that, I'm perfectly fine re-signing him and, He'll be on under uh, club control, and he can either be stay here and be part of the rebuild, or you know, if we feel we need to move him, we can always move him later. But I, I never felt like um, while there was discussions had, I, I don't know if he seriously was ever ready to move him with it with just a good offer. It needed to be the offer. Well, you also there's a couple more issues with market in in general. Uh, first of all. Um, like, you know, on the King's Beat podcast, uh, my buddy Sean Cunningham is like, I, he's talked to a ton of people on this exact subject and there he's under the impression that him and his group, his, his people, they want a true free agency for Lori that, mm. that they're wanting to go out and test the free agent market next summer. And that goes for Utah too. So, so Danny Ainge might be playing a big game of cat and mouse here, but you could trade for him and then lose him for nothing in this offseason. And that's a big, big risk because 
you know, again, we can like kind of like fish around and figure out what it is that uh, that New Orleans has been looking for for Brandon Ingram or, you know, you can, you know, we, we kind of have an idea of if you were going to get going to get Kyle Kuzma um, that they probably at this point, they want two first round picks, but you got to try to work around that and, and maybe not get him for that much. But what Utah's asking for is, you know, three first, first round picks, a really good young player and multiple pick swaps. And you could do all of that. And then next summer he could leave. And not only could he leave, he could go back to Utah and, and sign a long-term uh, contract there if they have cap space, which I'm sure they do. And so you're kind of in like a really odd situation with him. Um, and it's, it's kind of the same with Brandon Ingram uh, because he's on a one-year expiring deal. But I, I think Brandon is more willing to listen if the money is right uh, to, you know, for an extension where I think Laurie is, is someone who really does want to go out and, and, and at least experience free agency again. The King's interest in marketing was very genuine. Do you think the interest in Brandon Ingram was genuine? Do you think like they really wanted Brandon Ingram on this team? I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's split. There are some people within the walls that love Brandon Ingram and some that don't. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I think everybody fears what Ingram wants in an extension. And it, it's kind of the same thing. Pretty like, clear. It's public. Like it's out there. I don't think that that 205 number sways. Like that's the number that he wants. Well, that's the number he wants, but is he going to get that number anywhere? And, and that's the problem. I mean, you can say, Hey, I didn't think OG Ananobi was going to get that number. And sure enough, there he, he went and he got what 230, something like that. And that that's got to scare you because if you make that move, you're instantly over the second apron and, and your lottery, your draft pick in 2000, what it'll be probably 2032 or 2033 at whatever point when you have to pay him that's locked up. And you know, if you're a repeat offender, you, you might lose that pick eventually. Like it, it's just a mess. And mm -hmm. so you have to be super cautious with how you handle this because uh, what you don't want to do is, is not, you know, like no one wants to trade Keegan Murray in order to get one of these players. Yeah. But what you don't want to do is trade for one of those players, have to pay that player and then have to lose Keegan Murray down the road because you can't pay him. Mm -hmm. and, and these are, you know, that's the problem. Uh, if you've got DeRozan under contract at 24, 25, 26 million over the next three years, and you've got De'Aaron Fox on an escalating contract, like, Last time I checked, uh, De'Aaron Fox hasn't like gone out publicly and said he would take a huge extension, but for way less money. Like um, what, what, uh, what's what's his name it, with the Knicks did? Um, uh, Jalen Brunson. Yeah, what Jalen Brunson did, and, and and I'm not saying that he should. I, I'm just saying that like the Kings aren't in that situation. Sabonis is going to make forty plus million the next four years, so eventually you run out of cap space. It doesn't matter how much the, the salary cap rises. It's only going up 10% a year. And just in your annual raises with most players as 8%, you're going to lose that money. It, you know, so it's not like a big balloon is coming where all of a sudden the salary cap goes up 30 million in a year and you would be okay. You're going to have to manage your money very closely. Uh, especially again with a guy like Malik Monk under contract for 18 million. Uh, and then 19 and 20 and 21 million. I mean, you already have your money kind of set out. Well, and it also becomes one of those things though, where you're, you, you may be willing to spend whatever you need to spend if it's worth the, the check. Right. And what I mean by that is if the Kings are, you know, losing the Western conference finals in six games and then the Aaron Fox's contract is up and Keegan Murray's contract. Yeah. You pay it because you're on the doorstep. You know what I mean? But if they lose in the first round, mm -hmm. then you you think twice about paying that bill, that second the bill or anything else like that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that and I mean, like even if you are good and you find a way to be, you know, great like the Warriors were, right? You're still not making the money that the Warriors are making in the Bay Area. You can't charge that same dollar amount in Sacramento. You can come close to it, but. I mean, that's that right there is multi-billionaire money that the Warriors have done where they've basically 
uh, what was their their cap figure their uh, luxury tax figure was like 174 million this year or something just between salary and luxury tax they paid almost 400 million out the door mm-hmm. and and the kings paid like 144 million like it's that much of a disparity and so i, I get it you know there's even as of right now like the kings are under the luxury tax they're under the, lu- under the luxury tax because in order to go over the luxury tax you don't just give up the the money and then have to pay a little bit of luxury money you also give up the ability to get the luxury check on the back end and so for right now like i don't blame i, I don't blame them if there's a move that puts them over the top and they can either trade to make it like a net neutral trade where they're they have 17 or 18 million going out and and some money coming back i mean that's one way but if you're if you're going to make a move where you're taking on a huge huge amount of salary you got to make sure that it's worth it you know if you're going to pay if you're going to go with the luxury tax by 10 million bucks and you're going to end up paying i don't know like 13 million bucks in luxury tax or 14 million bucks in luxury tax on top of a higher salary that you're paying because you brought that player in so now you're out like 24 25 million and then on top of that you don't get any of the revenue sharing for the luxury tax you're out another 12 million so you know going again like 12 million over the cap is going to cost you basically 36 million versus being at the cap and that's a lot of money James Hammer, the insiders with us. We'll come back. We'll talk more about your Sacramento Kings here with Dylan with KC on Sacramento Sports Leader, ESPN 1320. This is a very simplistic way of, of thinking about it, but and, it, and it's probably not exact, but this is what helps me when I think about Second Apron. Second Apron is probably, what, $400 million players? Hmm. You're saying four one hundred million dollar mm-hmm. players, because uh, I think yeah, about Boston. Yeah, you think yeah, about you, Porzingis, Tatum. Yeah, Brown, I mean Porzingis. Yeah, they're Holiday. They might. Even, it might even. Well, they have. I think the Celtics. Jesse. I think they have the highest payroll yeah. in the. Yeah. Derek White is going to be another one. But the Warriors, when they said that enough is enough, they had Draymond, Clay, Steph, Wiggins, and Chris Paul slash Jordan Poole. Hmm. That was five hundred million dollar player, and they were they were they were like, that's not to get to the bottom of the second atrium. That's they were like way up there in the second atrium. So I would assume it's probably four hundred million dollar players, hundred and fifty million dollar players, or something like that. Yeah, see, Tom L brings up the repeater tax is what most owners are afraid of. Like the repeater mm-hmm. tax is when it gets crazy. In mm-hmm. year one, it's astronomical. Being like five million over the cap, it's like dollar for dollar, and then it goes up to like. I think it's a dollar twenty-five for every dollar for the next five million, and then it goes up to like a dollar seventy-five for every five million. And then once you get above that, if you go like up to twenty million over the cap, that next five million is is like three dollars or or more. And then if you get the repeater tax, then you do something like add two dollars to all of those dollar total totals. So yeah, it, it becomes astronomical how much you have to have have to pay. So this uh, I got to I got to dive into this a little bit. This Jordan Love thing is actually potentially kind of fascinating. I wonder what he's asking for. Hmm. If he's asking for. Hmm, if he's asking for I don't even know where to where to put it. Top five quarterback money. That would be kind of crazy. Yeah. Like you had 10 good games. And you want you want to be paid that way? Now timing is everything. He's he's going to tell the Packers like, what what you going to do? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what, you, what you going to do? Not pay me or whatever the case may be? Yeah, it's wild. That'd be I want I wonder how that is. Isn't that what uh who got money like that? Not like that, but cap. I think that was cap situation, right? Or was it Jimmy? No, it was Jimmy. Jimmy played five games with the Niners. And they they paid the hell out of him after that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yep. Biggity Blake, you ask where does the tax where does the tax money go? The tax money gets um, sent back out to non tax paying teams. Redistributed. Like 
fines and technicals, isn't that to like NBA cares or something like that? Yeah, fines and technicals. Yeah. Oh. Funny thing, is, you know you don't pay that. They just take it from you. <laughs> you never. You're just you never five thousand. You're just fifteen thousand dollars lighter in the check. You never have. Hmm. I'd be feeling like I got fined here at Odyssey sometimes. No. I have questions about our last page. Oh, God. I said, wait a minute. Wait, yeah. this is the damn I was minute. like, this math is not checking where is, out. Where is Pat at? I need yeah. to see the breakdown. Uh, is that who it is? Yeah, that email has not come yet either. I got a lot of fucking <laughs> questions. Wait, I said, wait a minute. Yeah. Hold on. Oh, is yeah. this the week that we didn't have days? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we got it. I looked right at that. I was like, "Wait, <laughs> no!" Because look, it's up on the website on like Wednesday night. I go to the, you know, the the pay stuff. Mm-hmm. I go up there to see what time were we talking about, and I said, oh, "I didn't expect that." Yeah, didn't what know. the hell is this? Can't wait to see Pat's breakdown of this. Hasn't come yet. Yeah, I know she's awfully slow in sending that little breakdown this time. Yeah, something. Something, something is <laughs> off. There needs to be a second. You know, <laughs> look here. I am not Sasha. <laughs> All no. right, you gonna give me every every cent? You know what I think <laughs> happens? This is a shoot. I don't think they know we work for two radio stations. Mm. We're coming back, James. <laughs> yeah, we're about to blow it all up here at Odyssey, Sacramento. It's all bad over here, James. We're starting fights with everybody. We're picking a fight with the one lady you don't pick a fight with because she's mean and she'll end you. I just mm. don't know what happened. That's all I'm that's, saying. That's, uh, like I think it me. might be we took the third, the fourth, and the fifth off. The that fourth. does not apply to us, James. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I could take as many days as I want to off. You better have better have my money. Yeah. yeah none, of, none, of that, none of that applies to us. That's funny. Um, yeah, we are not Sasha in this thing to nobody. Give me... Give me our money. Um, James Ham here back with us. We're talking uh, Kings basketball. Um, we talked a little bit about Kevin Herter. Have you? So let me let me ask you this. Summer League's wrapped up. Do you put any stock or let me let me rephrase that question. Why do you think Keon Ellis played like all the way till Wednesday? Um, I think part of it is a player wants to play. Um, part of it is you're still trying to maybe make the, the, the tournament, like to get to play a little bit more, um, uh, and maybe play for something, which, you know, really, realistically, the first game they lost, um, uh, that pretty much ended everything you're doing there. Um, uh, but there's also, it always comes to a point where, you need to allow the guys that aren't on the roster to kind of show you what they have and, and let them put their their stamp on whatever it is. Um, plus, you want a guy like Colby Jones to take on more. Uh, you want a guy like Mason Jones to take on more. And so those guys are, are you know, they're part of a group in the beginning. But as you get deeper and deeper in the summer league, you're like, all right, can you separate yourself in this setting? when it's you and like one other guy that are sort of our guys um, where Keon Ellis is, you know, sort of the main focal point early on. I think it's great for, for Keon to be there. Um, You know, again, we're talking about it. He started games last year and everyone get, got all excited about him, but we're also talking about a guy that midway through the season was on a two way contract. And so, you guys got people coming in or something. No, right? we do. We do. It's like, we, this is very much a live radio show. We're on for it. Just, just come in for God's go sakes. On, just go open on, the go door. On. It's far more distracting with you standing outside the window. God damn. <laughs> what up, what up, baby? Nice. Oh, come on, see. man. Come on, man. Let's do it, boy. We, we, I appreciate you, family. We yes, sir. Our yes, boy sir. Here. What up, liquor? What liquor up, is here. Bro? Yeah, man. Shout out, Ben. ben right. Coming here, looking like uh, uh about Luke say, yeah, oh, My God, been here looking like uh, uh, Randy my, Orton. My my <laughs> <laughs> Stacy almost walked in here too. Boy, are you here to see? What are you here? Oh, I'm not. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, my man. Black Label. Hey, you got to be here for the Thousand Show. August, August, I'll send you all the information. August 21st. You got to be here for the Thousand Show. Yeah. Smooth. Look That's at him, man. Like, boy. Yeah. Boy, Showing all the, all the guns. Man, the boy, gun show is crazy boy, right now. Creatine for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> yeah. Good. Oh, yes, sir. Right, God damn, I need to dog. work harder. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Ben is a monster. This is this is great. They walk by and, and Alyssa's like, hey, th- th- can we come in for a second? And I'm like, no, like we're <laughs> and then Ben walks over. And so what they do is they stand. So I'm, I'm gonna hit this for the people watching. They my, my camera. they stand right there at the window, <laughs> which is 10 times more distracting. And just letting them walk just in. Like, what you is, guys are like a uh, like a couple of puppies at a pet store. They're just in there looking at you, like trying to make you. This is you legitimately know. the most ridiculous show in the history of radio. Like, no, hey, can we come in? Is it cool? Like now? Okay. That's no, fine. It's fine. I don't even know what James was talking about at this point because I'm trying to subtly like. Mm-mm. <laughs> like no and it's not working because ben comes over and J- now james is distracted at least they didn't put a meeting I, at 12 i apologize for our lack of professionalism <laughs> there you go that was family though that was family. that is family that is oh family. yeah that he's a good dude yeah ben is jesus Christ. yeah this dude is He's been working he, out. He, he, he looked like Man. he's about to like do a UFC or boxing fight. Like the weight cut and, yeah, the, and absolutely. The, being shredded. Like it's crazy. Right hey, now. and ain't ain't no ain't no dad weight with him. No. They just had he number me, two. Yeah, he got me I know. crazy. That's you. my game. Up. I don't have any. And I'm like, all right, well, all right. You getting up at 4 a.m. I'm getting up at 3 30 now. Uh, to do. Mm. This was gonna have to be done. Wow. What now? <laughs> what, what, what were we talking no, about? No, he was talking about Keon still playing. And oh, Keon still James tried to answer. So just dump all of that. Just hit the green. <laughs> just hit the red button. Um, so Keon Ellis started like d- d- there was a you might not have caught this in your world travels. I don't remember what game it was, but Monty spoke at some Monty. Monty went the to the jazz game. He went to the broadcast that table. Matters. It was the jazz. Game. That's right. Yeah. Um, and he he sat in with the announce team, and he just had this line about. Keon stepped in, you know, why while other guys went out and played well for us. And I and I've harped on that line for two weeks now because it just sounded like, yeah, Monty didn't sound like he was describing a guy who's his starting two moving forward. It sounded like he described a guy who maybe did some things they didn't expect and they were very happy with. And he probably has a spot on the team, a, a, a spot in the rotation, but we've got some things to figure out. And I've admitted I'm probably overreacting to that one little line. But, man, that combined with the fact it feels like he played a lot more summer league than we thought he would uh, has brought into, like, the conversation. Well, I think a lot of us expect Malik Monk to start. I don't think it's inconceivable that Kevin Herter starts. Yeah, I mean, I think that that position is wide open. Honestly, I I do. I think it's wide open and, um, you know, we can pontificate on who we think is the best person to start at that position. But at the end of the day, it's going to really come down to what Mike feels, what his combination of players are, um, how comfortable he feels with, with Keon, um, you know, as a starter, whether he thinks he can hold up and, and hit the three at a 40% clip like he did last year. Like, look, if, if Keon Ellis goes out and plays like he did last year, it will all take care of itself because he's, he was really good. He was very, very good for the Kings last year. And you basically can, if he can average 10, 11, 12 points per game, uh, he can knock down 40 to 42% from three and he can play outstanding defense. He's probably going to be your starting shooting guard and he's going to play, you know, 24 to to 30 minutes a night. And then you're going to figure out everything else. Um, But there's also the possibility that, you know, he's just not ready for that. Um, The fact that he was able to show it last year, that's fine. But no one in the NBA game plan for him, even one game they didn't. And so what happens when they do, what happens when attention is on him? What happens when, again, you have two starters in your rotation in, um, in Demonis Sabonis and DeMar DeRozan who don't shoot the three ball. Like they can hit it 
but they don't shoot enough and they don't shoot at the highest clip all the time. And it's not consistent where you're getting four or five a game from those guys. You're going to need people like Keon that sit there and knock down threes. You're also going to need people like Kevin Herter who hit, who hit the three at a high clip. And so I don't know how it's all going to work out at the end of the day. Um, but for me, if you're adding a 24 point score to your starting lineup and you also hope that, um, a guy like Keegan Murray is going to take a step up and actually average more than he did last year and, and start to develop into the players that you want. You can't have five guys averaging 20 points per game in your starting lineup. And so somebody has got to be out there that's playing defense and doing all the dirty work and hitting spot threes. And, and that guy sure does look like it's Keon Ellis to me, as opposed to like, you know, five guys fighting over a ball in the starting lineup. So I'm intrigued, but like uh, Keon playing in summer league, hey, like he was on a two-way contract midway through the season. Like this is a guy who's just come on and, and you like what he's doing, but that doesn't mean he doesn't need more like, you know, maturing and more time uh, on the court with whoever it is. I, I think it's good that when you go to summer league and you're a player like Keon, you got to be more than you are with a regular team. And some of your weaknesses get exposed and you got to really fight to get through those weaknesses. That's a good thing for a young player. And, you know, it's the same reason the Kings brought Keegan Murray to summer league last year to get him out there, have him stretch his legs and to play a different role than what he's comfortable playing and force him to now get done in, in mid July. And now you got like two months to really work on what it is that you weren't good at and to get better before we start training camp. And you start, you know, now you have a new perspective on what it means to to go out there and play major minutes at an, at the NBA level. See, what James said at the beginning of that, um, which was spot on, but it's it's the thinking that I think Monty McNair and the coaching staff may have too. Like, yeah, yeah Keon did really good in that time. I don't know if he's – I'm not sure he'll be able to do that when people are game planning. I'm not sure he'd be able to do that, you know, on a night-by-night -night basis or whatever the case may be. So it may be a situation where if he wants to be in that, that starting role, he's got to show something and maybe prove himself again whenever that is, whether that's in training camp, whether that's 20 games into the season, whether that's, you know, after the trade deadline or whatever. But – I think the reason why it stuck out and why that was a, a, a very sound observation by you and because it cut, kind of flies in the face of what the general public is thinking, like, no, there is nothing left to prove. Keon should be the starter. Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, well, we liked what he did last night, but there's still some things we want to see from him before he gets to that point. And like I said, I don't know when that, that could be two weeks of training camp and they'll see what they want to see. And maybe he's the starter on opening night. We but. don't even know if Mike would have, made that move right like kevin herter's injury made the move for mike mm -hmm. and so had kevin herter stayed healthy and things kind of just being the way that they were mm -hmm. and mike makes the move makes the move that might tell us a different story going into this offseason right mike never had to make it right well that and you got to remember too that early in the season when keon got his first opportunity it was because chris duarte either got hurt or wasn't playing well then and you had moments where uh well, no, but you also you had the moment where uh, De'Aaron Fox got hurt early in the season, and he stepped yeah. aside, and they needed Keon for those minutes. Like, look, I, I think we always talk about this. Uh, the bas basketball, the NBA world is about opportunity and taking advantage of it when you get it. Mm -hmm. And I, I would love to think that Keon Ellis did enough to earn at least an opportunity to battle for the starting job, and I think he did, um, but, but we're going to have to see it. And like, look, if you want to be a great team, you can't just say, okay, like no competition. We're just going to give something to a young player and see how it goes. Like you're fighting for minutes from, from the opening, uh, not even like the opening of training camp the, this team is going to get to, they're going to assemble in like the second week or third week of September. They're going to be playing one-on-one -on -one and five on fives. They're going to have games against each other nonstop where the coaching staff is looking at players and seeing, you know, what have they worked on? How, how much stronger have they gotten and all that stuff. And then you're going to, you're going to have a much better idea of who you have in camp and how guys might work together. Um, but at the end of the day, this is about, you know, finding the right combination of eight or nine guys to play together and, and find success. And 
I would hope that Keon has done enough to get into that conversation, but you never know. Yeah. yeah Monty, think- so, sorry. Yeah, was one one thing. Mon- Monty, because you broke Chris Duarte's name came up. And I just no. feel like Monty, <laughs> Monty has had a lot of misses. <laughs> They're just really low risk misses, yeah, yeah, so yeah. they don't matter. Yeah, but man, he's had a couple misses. Yeah, but the number nine pick in the NBA draft isn't a miss. I mean, that's not a low risk. Like you missed. I, I mean, not to like well, yeah, that, but, that was a miss. Well, 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 wait oh, a minute, it, Davion. Well, uh, well, wait a minute. I don't really feel like Davion was a miss. I thought Davion played well last year. Oh, I don't think he was Chris horrible. Duarte but it was a miss. Sasha was a miss. Those yeah, were... but. You 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 flew all. How much money did you spend flying oh, everybody but crazy. James Ham out to Olymp wherever uh, uh, Sasha was? Oh, Olympiacos, yeah. And yeah. and yeah, well, okay. Mike comes back. Yeah, I don't even know if he's gonna play. <laughs> he said he said that like the second day of training camp. Like yeah. Mike saw Mike saw Sasha for one day. It was like oh. <laughs> Either way, man, you, you got a player going into his fourth NBA season who's no longer on your roster and is not getting an extension. That, to me, for a number Sorry. nine pick in the draft, that's a miss. So, like, and that's not to be... I think that Davion is a much better position for himself right now. I'm happy for Davion. I think he's in the right spot for him to go and flourish and find his NBA game, but, you know, I'm not going to... doesn't mean uh, that... Uh, that Monty McNair didn't miss on that pick, whoever's Monty, pick that was. Monty, Monty's still he's still an all star though. Like GM stuff and especially drafting is like baseball. What would you say, Monty's uh, two for three? Ben six hundred. Well, wait a minute. You got King two, and he two got for three. Oh, you you're got talking King about draft. Oh, you're yeah. talking about draft. Okay. Or did or did Divas the body get Tyrese? No, no, no. Monty no. got Tyrese. That was Monty. the first. Yeah, that was that, first okay. I'm just making sure. No, that was his. That yeah. was his first. That was he, his he's first leading the league in uh, batting average. All right. Well, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he has had four draft three. picks. And, well, yeah, I'm, th- had... I'm thinking first rounders. I'm just thinking first rounders. Well, no, he's got, he just drafted another one. He's going to miss six to eight months. Well, that he hasn't so. come up to the plate yet. That's true. And apparently his attitude <laughs> he's, sucks. He's just, he's just in the batting order. He hasn't come up to the plate yet. We don't know if it's what it is. Apparently he's a bit of a diva, too. So we, 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 oh, we're and, hearing more? Uh, well, it's, well, the, 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 I can't remember. Was the part <laughs> that Trista said, Hey, give me a drink. Was that real or was I, she? No, no, I think yeah, I think it was real. Yeah. Mm. yeah, we heard some unflattering things about Devin yeah, Carter at a, a party in just a bad summer league. Maybe, maybe his pain oh. meds had wore <laughs> off, and he was just a little. <laughs> was he in a sling? Did he already have a? Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. He's out here looking like just in case after field day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, the the one thing I wanted to mention though, while we were on the air, is on Friday I think it was I made a comparison to Bronny James and how he was playing to um, Boogie Ellis. And I was like Boogie Ellis and been hooping like that, and people were talking about that before the draft or whatever the case may be. Maybe he was listening. Boogie Ellis yeah. was Boogie Ellis was hoping yeah. over the weekend, he man. Salute to was. him. I'm glad to see it because I like the dude. I liked him at USC. And when I brought up the comparison, it wasn't ever to disparage him. No, it that's just, what it felt like. It, well, no, it wasn't to disparage it's my guy Boogie Ellis. Yeah, it was more so like really kind of give these guys a little time. Well, that's why you want got the same the same trajectory. Like they started off slow and they got more time to get comfortable and they played well to close up some of the. Well, and that's why you want to pull Keon Ellis in the last couple of games because you need to know some of these young guys. Like, do you want to draft them in the G League draft? Do you want to, uh, mm-hmm. you know, maybe one of your your two way players that you already signed, you're not comfortable with them being a two way. Maybe, maybe Mason Jones did enough to earn a roster spot, and you'll open up another two way, and you can go give it to one of these <laughs> young players. Uh, <laughs> poor Mason, that turnover at the end of that close game where he just sat there face first on the floor <laughs> like he me. thought his whole career, nba career just <laughs> got thrown out of bounds i felt so bad we for still him. believe in your maze come oh, on I dog felt, i believe in you bro he just knew it ain't it. over the, 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 oh i felt so bad for mason jones in those moments because he had 
Was it a turnover or a missed shot that ultimately led? Uh, yeah, that- we had a missed shot and then the turnover. Oh, mm. But he did have the game tying shot before that. Mace, I'm gonna still vouch for you, dog. Nah, Mace, we ride with Mace, but oh, <laughs> uh, he, they, they, hey, turn, hey, get up, bro. <laughs> the game's <laughs> not over. They had to pull that poor kid off the ground. I felt mm. so bad for him. <laughs> I felt so bad for him. At the Kings, who, who they they did sign two way guys. Did they sign two way guys or summer league guys in in after the draft? No, they signed two not two ways. League, uh, Isaiah. Two. Isaiah Crawford um, and Crawford. Isaac Jones. Okay. Or is it, is, is, is Isaac that it? Crawford and Isaiah Jones. <laughs> That's good. I don't know. They had too it, many Joneses. Uh, That's all I know. Too many Joneses, too many Ellis's. Um, yeah, a little chaos. Do they, do they have two way spots left? No. It doesn't seem like as of right now, but you can wave two way guys and, and pick up other two way guys. I yeah. like what I saw from Boogie Ellis these last yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I once again I liked him at USC. I was intrigued by him. He had a slow start to the summer, but the you know, last two games, he, sh- he he defended with with a level of ferocity. I don't know if he's like the tall enough to be the wing that everybody's thinking about, but he he was trying to lock up. I think he played really hard, and, and that's what you have to do when you're at summer league. You gotta you gotta show that you got the dog. You know that you're willing to go out there and do all the dirty work and dive for the loose balls and and really just put it all out there and leave it on on the court. And and I think he did that as as well as you know you can you can ask for mm-hmm. well things will probably quiet down now here for a few weeks the all summer league team has been named and well summer league playoffs are tonight not for the kings but That's great you tell me <laughs> you see they get in the ring i think they got a ring last year too but they can yeah they the, like... the, the ring started yeah, mm. that ring's a little it's a little too much why? It's Why little, do you hate everything? That that one's a little too much. Did you have you seen the ring? It no. almost looks like the Celtics ring. It's a little too much, man. Well, then they the Celtics get... need to do better in putting together well, their they, rings. They are not like finished the yet. They still got to win the world championship. Well, when's that game being scheduled? <laughs> they still got a championship. I don't know. Okay, yeah. What a joke. <laughs> NBA ch- <laughs> world champions of what? All right, man. Whatever you say. Amazing. It is. Oh, um, but we'll always find King's conversations to have. That's what we do here. Uh, happy birthday, bro. Thank you. Mother. Yeah, dude. Um, for Appreciate your birthday, you. Uh, you can stick around here for about three more hours to do another radio show. You can spend more the gift time. gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> you can spend more time with me. <laughs> it's a gift that keeps on giving the whole year long, Clark. <laughs> that King of the Hill. No, that's, uh, I only know you said Clark. That's oh, no, no. Yeah, anthem. no, that's, that's Christmas. Cousin okay. Eddie. Yeah, yeah, that's because yeah, the jelly of the jelly of the month club. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> no, when he, that's what was his bonus. That that's was his, his bonus. <laughs> see, look at that. Look at that. You guys got a reference. <laughs> Hallelujah! It's happened. It's he a birthday he miracle. Gonna, he thought he was going to build a pool, and they gave him the jelly of the month. <laughs> yeah. Pretty sure you laugh now. I'm pretty sure that's oh, how no, Odyssey's that, going to pay us. Wait a minute, don't. <laughs> That, that hit a little too close to home when just, I thought about it. I just realized Stacy hasn't moved. She's literally been sitting right outside the studio since Ben left. Oh, He's coming no. for us. I got to go to the bathroom, and I'm scared to walk out the door. Oh, oh Lord. Good luck with that. She's going to peek over that computer, and it's going to be curtains. <laughs> it's going to be a jelly of the month in lieu of payment. <laughs> uh, James, welcome back from Cabo, man. We're, we're happy to have you back here. We're happy to have uh, all of you. Uh, back here with us. 